Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about some federation services, some federated access, kind of single sign on these sort of stuff. So uh, specifically, we're going to outline the Microsoft Active Directory Federation Services, how that works, and then how you can implement some big IP technology and make your life a ton easier. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw kind of a flow of what happens when a user is trying to access a, uh, a resource or a web service, and, uh, and, then we'll, and then we'll kind of draw the F5 side of the house. All right, so let's say you have a, uh, a user out here in the internet. So user, and he's going to come in, and he ultimately wants to, uh, he ultimately wants to access, let's say, Office 365, because, you know, everybody wants some Office 365. All right, 365. All right, so he wants to uh, he wants to write some kind of Word document or whatever, you know, needs to get to his Office 365. Well, before he can get to that service, there is a uh, there's this gateway that exists out here. So I'm going to put gateway, and the gateway is a federation gateway that you have to present a token and cookie and all this kind of good stuff too in order for that gateway to say okay I'm gonna let you as user to you know access your office 365 capabilities your web services all right well the question is how do you present the correct stuff to the gateway before you can get into office 365 so here's how the flow is set up or here's how the architecture I guess is um, is built you have a user and and you can by the way you can uh, look at the Microsoft uh, uh, you know, curriculum or the Microsoft, um, you know, all, all of their documentation to, you know, to see exactly how they recommend to do this, but this is how they recommend it. All right, user, you're going to have an external firewall here, firewall, all righty, and then that is going to come into a load balancer, so I'll just put LB right here, I'm going to put the boxes around this so you can see it better, all right, so you're going to have a firewall to a load balancer that is then going to go to a, what we're going to call a web app proxy all right and you're going to have a couple of those because you know in case one goes down kind of thing right so web app proxy and that's why the load balancer is important because it needs to be able to load balance to these web application proxies the web app proxy acts as a reverse proxy back to the rest of this <coughs> uh, you know all the architecture back here so that that way if you're an internal user or a remote user, like an external user, you come through this, uh, I guess for an external user, you come through the web app proxy, it, it makes it look like um, you know, you, you're the same you know, back to this back end stuff. All right, from the web app proxy, there's another firewall. So firewall there. Um, and then there's another load balancer. So I'll put LB right there. And then you have your Active Directory stuff. So the ADFS, and I'll put a couple of those because, you know, the only thing better than one Active Directory Federation server is two Active Directory Federation servers. All right, so this right here is kind of what we'll call the ADFS farm, as it were. All right, and then from here, you're going to have your actual Active Directory. All right, Directory. All right, that's a, that's a C right there. Apologize for the penmanship. All right, so basically what happens, user comes in, goes through all this stuff. And, and ultimately, again, he's trying, to, he's trying to write that Word document. You know, he's trying to get to Office 365. But ultimately, the user is going to come through all of this stuff. He's going to authenticate to the Active Directory Federation Services farm. But the way that, uh, that that's going to happen is the ADFS servers are going to come and authenticate that user to Active Directory. Then that's when he gets the token and the cookie and the things that he needs to then present to the gateway over here. And then the gateway is going to say, okay, based on the cookie and the token that you were that, that you gave me, I'm going to give you access to your Office 365 web service. And so everybody's happy. So now he's he's in there. All right. You can tell from the architecture here, you're going to need a firewall, a load balancer, web app proxies, another firewall, another load balancer, and then you're back into the Active Directory, you know, stuff. So let me show you how you can do this if you want to do it on the F5 side of the house. All right, you got that same user up here and he is still trying to access that same that same word document right um, all right so he's going to come in and rather than having to put a firewall in place here uh, you can put a big ip and i'm just going to put big goodness big ip all right and i'm just going to write this big old big old big ip all right 
One thing that the Big IP is, uh, is known for and is certified as is a, uh, is a firewall. All right, so you don't need a firewall here. You just need a Big IP. Load balancer, guess what the Big IP can do? It can load balance. So you're going to put, uh, you're going to provision LTM on this thing. Um, the web application proxy, the Big IP can do that as well for, via the uh, access policy manager APM module that you can provision on the Big IP. Alrighty, um, so the firewall, the load balancer, and these web app proxies, you can combine all of that stuff into one big IP, and then you, uh, so basically you've taken out a big chunk of this, you know, architectural infrastructure stuff, and the overhead and the headache and all that kind of stuff that goes along with all these different parts and pieces, now you combine that into one big IP. Alright, so then you would come from that into another firewall, uh, and load balancer, which by the way, you can use a big IP for this as well, because it is a firewall, like I said, and it is a load balancer. But let's say you didn't, uh, let's say you didn't do that for whatever reason, uh, then you, you could still have your firewall here, it's kind of internal firewall coming to the load balancer. And again, we recommend the big IP LTM for this load balancer as well. Um, but I'm going to put load balancer nonetheless. And then now you're back into that part of the architecture where you're going to need to uh, deploy the, you know, you're still going to have ADFS, ADFS here, the farm. And I'm writing too. I mean, you could have a bunch of these. Um, and then, of course, Active Directory. Active Directory. All righty. Directory. Okay, so here's your farm. And then that's going to authenticate out here to Active Directory. So you have the same user. And instead of going through, you know, all these different parts and pieces and steps to finally get back here, he goes through one big IP, and then a couple steps later, he's boom, he's there. Um, you can also, for external users, you can actually pre-authenticate via the APM uh, sign-on page. You can pre-authenticate to ADFS, uh, so it saves some time, some uh, it, it gains some efficiencies. Um, one uh, one really cool thing about all of this is you may say, well, hey, with my big IP. Um, how do I configure all this stuff? How do I know how to set, you know, if I've, if I've just eliminated all of this stuff from my architecture, now it's on one big IP, is that going to take a lot of configuration and all that? The cool answer about that is I'm going to put I app right here. I app, and I'm even going to put a couple little stars next to the I app. Because there's an I app out there that you can run an I app on your big IP, and it will configure all this stuff for you. You answer a few simple questions, and, uh, and then once you answer those questions, it will pre-configure all of the different settings and all the different stuff that you need uh, to make sure that all of this stuff is set up uh, exactly the way that, <clears throat> that it needs to be. All right, this, is, this can be used for ADFS 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. Um, you, as you set this up, you need to make sure you use the correct version of Big IP, depending on what version of ADFS that you're wanting to do. But the, uh, but the good news story here is that you're going to have to deploy all this stuff anyway because you want that single sign-on capability. You know, you want that claims-based single sign-on stuff for all your users so they don't have to have all these multiple logins, multiple passwords. So you're going to do this anyway. You might as well do it much more efficiently and conveniently and make it go faster by deploying one big IP and, uh, and life is good. So, uh, so I hope you've learned a couple of things on how to... Uh, you know, gain some efficiencies in the ADFS uh, architecture and uh, get out there, use the big IP technology to your advantage, and, uh, and man, everyone's going to have a great day after that. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video. Uh, if you like this, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.